Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this second community meeting for the Hopper Avenue corridor improvements project between Coffee Lane and Highway 101. I'm Chris Balanusi, Capital Projects Engineering Assistant Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation of this meeting can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our translator, Roberto, will translate what I've just said, and then our host, Kimberly, with the City of Santa Rosa, will explain how the meeting will work. Buenas noches y bienvenidos a esta segunda reunión comunitaria para el proyecto de mejora del eje vial Avenida Hopper entre Coffee Lane y la autopista 101. Uh, mi nombre es Chris Balanesi, ingeniero asistente de ingeniería de proyectos capitales del Ayuntamiento de Santa Rosa y quiero agradecerles eh, que, que nos acompañen esta noche. La interpretación en directo de esta reunión se puede escuchar en el canal en español. Pueden unirse al canal en español presionando el icono de la interpretación que parece un globo terráqueo que se ubica en la barra inferior de su pantalla. Just a moment, I need to make sure the interpretation is working correctly. Just a moment. Okay. My question. Canal de Inglés. Can you hear me in the English channel? Okay. Eh, están ustedes en el, el canal de español y voy a tratar de interpretarles lo que está ocurriendo en esta reunión. Okay, Roberto, can can we confirm that you're in the Spanish room? I am in the Spanish room. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, then you shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much. Okay, Chris, I think we're ready. Oh, let's see. Okay, just checking one moment to make sure that interpretation is working. Roberto's there. Okay, Jamie, I think it might be um, something that you would select on your end because it seems like Roberto is in the room where he belongs.
Thank everybody for their patience. Yeah. And just to a reminder, okay, okay, uh, let's see. So uh, thank you. As community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera are muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Uh, please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the project website envisionhopper.com following the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Chris will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Thank you, Kimberly. Once again, I wanna thank all of you for joining us tonight. Your participation and input are important to us as we review and discuss the preliminary design alternatives to improve features and functionality along the Hopper Avenue corridor. The design alternatives presented tonight are based on input received during our first Hopper Avenue community meeting in November and feedback received through the online survey. We'll, st we'll start tonight's meeting with an overview of the agenda and topics we plan to cover in the presentation. The project, the project description, timeframe, presentation, public comment, and next steps. For tonight's discussion, we'll focus on the roadway corridor along Hopper Avenue from Coffee Lane to Highway 101 and your vision for its future use. We wanna hear from you, your feedback on the preliminary design alternatives and how the designs fit with your vision for the future of Hopper Avenue. Our intent tonight is to gain input from you on the design elements, features, and functionality. In addition to feedback provided tonight, an online survey will be available following this meeting to capture additional community input to allow us to further refine your vision for Hopper Avenue. A link to the survey will be placed on the project website, envisionhopper.com. The location and date have not yet been determined for the third community meeting. However, we will send another postcard mailer and update the project website once the meeting details are confirmed. Now, I would like to introduce Brian Fletcher, principal with Calendar Associates. Brian and his team will be listening intently to your comments as they will be developing and refining your vision for this vital community roadway. Brian will present various design options for your consideration based on the community input and feedback we have received. Following his presentation, we will open the meeting for comments and questions so we can hear your thoughts on the designs and any concerns you may have for this project. As we move through the presentation, if there is a slide you would like to comment on or ask a question, please try to note the page number so we can return to that slide for reference. Brian, you have the floor. Great, <clears throat> thank you, Chris. Uh, good evening, hello, my name is Brian Fletcher and I am a principal with Calendar Associates Landscape Architecture, or called CALA. As you may know from the last meeting, my parents have called Santa Rosa home for now over 25 years, so I'm really excited to be part of this project. Next slide. The main purpose of tonight's meeting is to present the preliminary design alternatives that were prepared based upon the feedback received during the first community meeting and from the online survey. I will also briefly recap what was presented during the last community meeting 
And at the end of the meeting, you will have a chance to ask questions and most importantly, provide comments. Next slide. So to begin, we have a couple live polling questions for you to answer that will give us some insight about who is on the call. These questions will also be available on the survey that you can participate in after tonight's meeting. Use your mouse to click on your answers and we'll give you some time to do so. Great. So the first question was, did you attend the last community meeting? And, and a good portion, 38% did. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll, we're going to be going back over what was explained in the first workshop to account for the 63%. Um, and then you can see uh, by zip code kind of where people are, are attending. So this is great information. Thank you. So with that, we'll move on to the next slide. Just a bit more on the project background and goals. Funding for the project comes from the PG&E settlement and is intended to repair the damage to Hopper Avenue caused by the fire and reconstruction efforts. It also allows for community input to be an integral part of the process. Project goals include working with community and stakeholders to develop a collective vision a vision that accommodates multiple modes of travel, including pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicles, while at the same time providing traffic calming measures to slow cars down without impacting emergency vehicle routes. We are also open to hearing your thoughts on other project goals that we may not have indicated. Next slide. There are other projects currently happening in the area that, are, that our project will coordinate with. These include gas main improvements, additional road work, and roadway landscape repair that is already underway. This slide illustrates the project timeline and process. As you can see, this is our second community meeting. We already had one meeting and we used that feedback to prepare some preliminary design alternatives that we will show tonight. We will use the input we received tonight to develop a preferred design alternative. If we don't achieve general consensus on the alternatives, we will present the preferred alternative during a final community meeting in June. At that point, we hope to have built consensus and conclude phase one of the project. In late summer, we hope to begin phase two, which will include more detailed design and construction. Construction is estimated to be complete by the fall of 2025. The project limits we are focusing on are from Coffee Lane on the left side of the page to Highway 101 on the right. If you attended the last community meeting, you may remember that we have broken the project into three distinct segments based upon their unique characteristics. First, there is a residential zone from Coffee Lane to Skyview Drive and Banyan Place. Then there is a transition zone from Skyway and Banyan to Airway Drive, which leads to a commercial zone from Airway to Highway 101. Here are a couple pictures of the residential zone. In the image on the left, you can see the wide open configuration of the travel lanes, buffered bike lanes, and a center turn lane. The image on the right shows the damaged sidewalks and planter strips where trees used to be. These are some pictures of the transition zone that is in between the residential and commercial zones. The image on the left is at Piner Creek Trail and shows a very similar roadway configuration to the residential zone. 
However, you can see in the sidewalk config, you can see the sidewalk configuration is different and inconsistent throughout this zone as shown on the right image. Both images show a greater number of trees, but not necessarily all of them are at the back of curb. Lastly, here are a couple pictures of the commercial zone. The image on the left shows the roadway configuration and lack of a bike lane on the south side. You can also see the sidewalks and a greater number of street trees. The image on the right shows the mural on the storage facility. Next. During the last community meeting, we showed images of potential improvements that could happen along the corridor for inspiration. These included pedestrian improvements such as wider sidewalks and increased visibility crosswalks. We also shared options for different bike lane configurations, as well as beautification elements such as median islands, street trees, gateway signs, and decorative pavements. So after presenting the inspiration images, what did we hear? Well, we received 116 survey responses. From the graph on the top left, you can see that most of the survey participants were residents that live around Hopper Avenue and in the 95403 zip code. On the right, we asked what types of improvements were most important. Half of participants through thought beautification was most important, with the remaining priorities split between pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicle vehicular improvements. Design elements that ranked high in the responses were roadway landscaping, safe, safe bike lanes, and improved sidewalks and crosswalks. There was also a desire to provide traffic calming measures and reduce vehicle speeds and we know the road surface needs to be repaved. Based upon these comments, we developed a series of preliminary design alternatives that I will share with you next. We have split the design alternatives by zone. First, we'll start in the residential zone, and here are the existing conditions. If you look at the map along the bottom of the screen, this condition occurs between Coffee Lane and Skyview and Banyan. You can see that the street corridor is very open. There are seven foot wide bike lanes with a wide bike buffer on each side of the street and a travel lane in each direction with a center turn lane in the middle. On each side of the street, there is a narrow sidewalk and planting area that zigzags back and forth. Here is the first design alternative for the residential zone. One of the things we heard was to bring back the trees. So we have widened the sidewalks and straightened them out in order to provide a continuous parkway strip along each side of the road that would be planted with street trees. We would also replace the center turn lane with a landscaped median whenever a left turn lane was not needed. A big advantage of this design is being able to preserve the existing curbs, which lowers construction costs. Unfortunately though, one of the downsides of this configuration is that it would create a few wide expanses of pavement near road intersections that would be the same width as today. However, throughout most of the road corridor, drivers would still feel like the road is narrower because of the median and because of the street trees, which would promote traffic calming. This is the second design alternative for the residential zone. It is the same as the first alternative with the addition of curb extensions near intersections. The intent with the curb extensions is to reduce the pavement width where there are gaps in the center median. The main drawbacks of curb extensions are that they would require building new curbs near the intersections and would reduce the bike lane buffer width for the length of the curb extension. 
However, the advantages would be shorter street crossings for pedestrians and more planting area for beautification. Here's what alternative two would look like in plan view from above the street. The curb lines would weave in and out, creating variation in the street corridor, which would help with traffic calming. Striped crosswalks are proposed at each intersection with decorative pavement at Coffee Lane. Green colored pavement markings within the bike lanes at intersections would help increase visibility for cyclists. Moving on to the transition zone from Skyview and Banyan to Airway Drive, here are the existing conditions in this segment looking west. There is a large area of open pavement on the right side that leads to a drainage area. This is part of the road. This is part of the road that we are looking to change. Next slide. Here is the first design alternative for the transition zone. We heard that walking along Hopper Avenue is uncomfortable, so we wanted to provide a continuous sidewalk with a constant offset from the road. In this alternative, we would remove the existing drainage area and straighten the travel lanes to make room for a center median. This would provide a wide bike lane buffer throughout the transition zone and still provide some traffic calming because of the center median reducing the perceived pavement width. This is the second design alternative for the transition zone. It still includes an improved sidewalk on the right side, but the drainage area has been expanded to cover the large area of open pavement that exists today. The expanded drainage area could be used to clean stormwater and provide additional landscaping. The center median has been removed, so the pavement width does not become too narrow. This alternative would also create a lane shift, which would promote traffic calming. The last area to discuss is the commercial zone. Here are the existing conditions, and you can see that there is no bike lane on the left side. There are also two travel lanes in each direction, which is different from the other segments. In the commercial zone, we are proposing that a bike lane be added along the left side to close the gap in the bicycle infrastructure. This would require the travel lanes to become slightly narrower and the bike lane on the right side of the street would reduce from six feet wide to five feet wide. The last area we wanted to show is the intersection of Skyview Drive and Banyan Place. There is currently a bus stop on the south side of the road closer to Piner Creek. We would propose to move that bus stop to the Skyview and Banyan intersection and add a bus shelter. We would also introduce a high visibility crosswalk across Hopper Avenue with pedestrian controlled rapid flashing, flashing beacons. The crosswalk would provide better access to the bus stop from both sides of the neighborhood and also provide a safe route to cross the street within the residential zone. So, that concludes our presentation. I'll now turn the meeting back over to Chris. Thank you, Brian. At this time, we'd like to hear from you, our community. So we will now move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. How, however, before we begin, I will ask Kimberly to review how you can participate by asking live questions and comments. Thank you, Chris. Once Chris calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, 
you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted so you may ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so the panelists can respond to your question. Kimberly, are we ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Yes, we are just about. Uh, just wanna note a couple more things. If you need to have your question translated, please let us know once you've been called on and then please allow us a moment to confirm the translator is ready. Please also remember to speak slowly so our translation team can relay your question. Anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand using the Zoom raise hand feature. And again, if you're calling in, please dial star nine and that will allow us uh, to recognize you. Um, so looks like our first person in the queue is Debbie. Debbie, I'm gonna send a prompt and once you receive that, you can identify yourself if you so choose and um, ask your question or make your comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Debbie. I'm a, I live in Coffee Park and I wanna compliment the design team on what they've put together. I, I think it will look beautiful. My comment, um, and it hasn't been discussed how this will um, be done, but around the trees, that's my comment, my concern about keeping it weed free and the least amount of maintenance possible. And I would love for the design team to go ahead and look at Coffee Park where there were some trees planted and they have glued down in some fashion uh, a pink pink type gravel and i noticed when i walk around there that the weeds do not come up between it there's some dirt just immediately adjacent to the uh, bark of the tree and then the the pink gravel and so it, it stays secure in place there's no weeds there's going to be a lot less maintenance and i would i would love to see something like that um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your input. Uh, this, this, uh, we did discuss this with parks and, um, I, I think that based on your input that we will definitely be, uh, reviewing coffee park for, uh, for, the, for that element. Thank you. Do we have another raised hand? Yes, we have a robust attendance <laughs> this evening. So I wanna thank all of our community. We, uh, we are happy that everybody made time for this. Our next, uh, our next raised hand is Chris Eggers. Thank you. I appreciate the design on both of these. The addition of trees really makes a difference as well as the median. Um, I have a comment and uh, two comments actually. I noticed that the respondents to the survey, 47% of them said they, they would like to have buffered bike lanes. And I noticed that the speaker from the design company mentioned safer bike lanes. And I'd like to say that there's a difference between the two. I'm not sure how the buffered bike lanes got changed to safer bike lanes, but a painted lines on the street aren't adequate protection for most families to feel secure enough to ride their bikes from one destination to the other. So I don't think those would accomplish your goal of having more people riding their bikes to their destinations. I really think this stretch of um, street needs buffered bike lanes, which means they're protected by some kind of physical barrier. Um, so that's one comment. And the other comment is, um, I understand that there are no bike lanes or there's no bike lanes on the south side of the street in the commercial area. And um, there's a talk of reducing one bike lane to five feet and adding a five foot bike lane on the other side. And I would just like to say that that's not actually wide enough for a bike lane, that um, it doesn't allow uh, for a wider bike or a bike with a trailer or 
a bike that's carrying um, things on it. I did notice, however, that there are two lanes and a turn lane in the commercial district on both sides of the street. And certainly we could take one of those lanes and um, to possibly replace it um, uh, and give that uh, real estate to the bike so we could actually have buffered bike lanes there. And it's actually um, a usable bike lane for folks who live in the area and families who'd like to ride to their destinations. Thank you. Chris, thank you very much for your um, for your input on the on the bike lane in the commercial area, as well as the buffered uh, buffered slash safer bike lanes. Um, Rob or Brian, would you like to elaborate on some of the reasoning behind uh, the omission of the buffered bike lanes? I certainly can can start on this one, and Rob, you can um, chime in if if you'd like. Uh, with any with any street, we have a lot of competing interests and and lots of things to um, lots of competing goals. Um, if you remember, one of the goals is to maintain uh, wide enough roadway width uh, for um, evacuation routes. So during our preliminary design, uh, when we were going through sketches, we were coordinating with uh, the fire department, which had um, concerns with bringing in a vertical curb or buff, uh, physical barrier um, along those wide uh, buffered bike lanes. So it, um, that, was, that was the concern and why we're presenting the alternative with enhanced striping of the buffers um, to make them more visible than they currently are. I, I hope that, and, and then the other, the other portion with the commercial zone, um, in order to uh, have a response back, we'll take a look at uh, the traffic counts and such in order to see if the volumes would even allow for uh, one of those lanes to, to disappear. But as you go towards 101, the traffic volumes are certainly going to increase. Thank you. May I respond to the comment about the fire department? Sure, sure. Um, I just uh, several other um, projects where we've suggested buffered bike lanes, the fire department has intervened. And I wonder um, about the logistics of that and the legalities of that. I'm just it's, it seems to be an ongoing issue and I'm not really sure how to deal with that, but we have our vision zero in conflict with a fire department who seems to have some I, set ideas about what does and doesn't work. And I wanna make sure that those are grounded in reality. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Do we have a, or I can see that we have more hands. Uh, Next up is Megan Alexander. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, I'm close to the corner of Hopper and Coffee, and that intersection is where the cars peel out um, every day, all day long, all night long, three in the morning. Um, and they try to go zero to 100 in 60 seconds. And then they slow down after that when they get closer to the um, commercial area and in the industrial area. So um, that the traffic calming is very important close to that intersection. And I know you talked about the curbs where they came out a little bit near the intersection. I don't know if that would calm the traffic. We also have people doing donuts all day long, like broad daylight doing donuts in that intersection. And um, and they aren't the 20 somethings, they're like the 40 somethings with no mufflers on their car. And it's really unnerving. There's already been somebody that came through the sound wall at my next door neighbor's house. And I get very concerned that it's gonna happen again and somebody's gonna get hurt. Megan, thank you for your valuable input. Um, we we have been kind of playing around with different 
opportunities to to slow down traffic and um, we did play around with the idea of a uh, traffic circle or something to kind of eliminate that um, the donut issue and um, when we when we laid it out with um, our design team it they simply wouldn't fit um, we can definitely explore some different alternatives for that intersection um, but that is that's definitely great input thank you i appreciate it um it's it's hard to even be in your yard you can't hear yourself think it gets so loud and it's um, it's really out of control. I know that there used to be a police officer that set that down the road, a motorcycle cop, and he's not doesn't do that anymore. And people just really use that as a speedway. And they all they what's weird is they speed up there, they peel out, and then they slow down when they get closer to the freeway. So, yeah, if we could bring up. Um... The preliminary design alternative in the residential zone, the plan view. There you go, perfect. Um, yeah, so with this alternative, Megan, we're really trying to create variation in the roadway, which will, um, which we feel will help with the traffic calming. Um, you know, things like um, the median planting. If we can get some a mature canopy uh, where we have kind of the bulb outs where the curb extensions are happening and you can see that at Coffee Lane, you can see it at Crestview Drive. These all these all work to create visual kind of movement in the roadway, which helps for traffic calming um, and, and kind of a response even to the last comment about um, buffered bike lanes, we actually, in this alternative, are, pro are proposing portions of buffered bike lane at the intersections where we can do those. That's where the asphalt widens out because we don't have a center turn lane or center median, and therefore um, we have wide enough area for the evacuation routes. Thank so you so much. I hope that helps, Megan. Yeah, that really does. That makes me feel a little better. Thanks, Megan. Um, Kimberly. Um... Next up, we have Lisa Mast. Hi, uh, I've uh, lived in Coffee Park for 35 years. And if you're going to be asking us to um, do another um, voting today, or even if you're not, uh, when you were outlining this and talking about the differences, there were differences that were pointed out, but I'm exhausted, it's been a long day. So when I'm looking at these pictures, I can't really tell the pros and cons you were talking about, you know, widen widening the median that different places or widening the sidewalk at different places. So do you have a slide that lists uh, sort of the pros and cons between the alternatives? I could, Chris, if you would like, I can answer this. Um, so if these, these will also be on the website, but if we go back to um, any one of the alternatives, uh, whoever's controlling the slides, um, there you go. Per this is a perfect one, a perfect example. Up at the upper right-hand corner, Lisa, you yes. can see we've tried to list out the pros and cons of each one. Okay. And it's a it's a lot to go over and, and think of. And, and um, after we get done with the questions and comments, there's going to be talk about the link to the survey, the link to the website, and, and you have plenty of opportunity after this to digest and continue to look at these concepts and continue to provide input. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Sorry, 
<laughs> was a little quick on that one. Um, uh, next, we have, um, and, and if there's something else that you really wanted to add, uh, Lisa, please feel do feel free to raise your hand again and, and we'll come back around to you. Um, next up, we have uh, Veronica Derriman. Veronica, if you'd like to go ahead and uh, make your comment, you can also um, let us know who you are if you if you choose. Actually, I'm Alan Derriman, and oh. um, I wanted to compliment you on the designs. The medians are uh, really nice, and I think that they will calm the traffic a little bit, but I really concur with Megan. Um, I live on Hopper about uh, 50 feet from um, the corner of the place where they do the donut every day and um, every night. And in, in Sunday morning and Saturday morning, the old guys get their hot rods out and drag down the street. Um, and it is so loud that like was said earlier, you can't even hear yourself think. Um, so much so that when we rebuilt our house, we spent extra money to put a reinforced retaining wall behind the sound wall because of the fact that people can drive right through the sound wall. Um, in addition, um, I'm interested in knowing what the plan is for maintaining the landscape strips, which I really like, especially the ones with the medians in the, in the center. But I'm interested in knowing uh, what, what's the plan for maintenance care. Thank you, Alan. So we, we've discussed this with our parks department, which is uh, responsible for maintaining the, um, the landscaped areas, I, I believe throughout the city. And one of the main concerns was, how do we do this while also uh, not putting too much load on the, on the parks department. So we're a little early in this process to discuss uh, specific plantings and that sort of thing, but it is uh, an extremely relevant question and um, it's definitely going to be an integral part of our uh, project planning for the future. Um, can I make another comment, please? Yeah. Um, so for years, we've been a resident for a long time in Coffee Park. Um, the Parks Department was taking care of it. And then all of a sudden, one night, they had a special session of the City Council. And they decided that the residents were supposed to take care of everything, um, which was very, very upsetting, especially since we are more than willing to pay taxes and we every time there's a raise we we vote for it so um i'm hoping that you come up with an answer for that and and really hoping that you come up in a, with an answer for the the drag strip especially the sound and i'm hoping that you also consider uh lowering the speed limit there and perhaps installing um a camera on the coffee hopper corner thank you Thank you, Alan. Okay, looks like next up we have Dean Parsons. Dean Parsons, you'll have a prompt and you should be able to unmute. Thank you very much. Um, the I really appreciate what you're proposing to do here. And I think it's a great use of the funds that have become available to the city. Um, just a couple of concerns. Um, if you can plant as many trees as possible, I think that is one of the best things because I too have significant concerns about the ability to maintain this landscaping long-term. Um, unfortunately, Santa Rosa has a hard time doing that throughout the whole city, and I don't want to see nice landscaping planted and then not maintained. Um, also, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm not sure who's responsible for maintaining the, the existing sound wall. Um, maybe it is the city, but I'm sure you're thinking about that. But um, that that's a concern as well for long-term maintenance. 
Um, I think it's a great idea for, for the uh, bulb outs. If you could do more of those, um, perfect. I think it's a great traffic calming method. Um, if you can extend those medians a little more closer to Crestview Drive, um, I think it'd be good. Um, fire department needs to hear this input um, because I think there's ways to get around their concerns. So also, um, uh, that's all I have and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, thanks, Dean. Kimberly, next hand. Okay, next up, it looks like we have David Lowen. David, you should be receiving a prompt. You can identify yourself and ask your question or make your comment. Hi, folks. I live about 10 yards from the street of Hopper. I've been yelling at the traffic engineer for four years to get that thing narrowed, and they did. So my compliments to that nice going from two lanes, which is where they accelerate right by my driveway. And kudos to the residents that have cleaned up the front facing the street. Looks wonderful. And uh, I like your design for the sidewalk and the bus. That's a big concern. I see people running for their lives, <laughs> like me, when I have to get across the street. And that, I think that uh, the crosswalk painted there would be a calming effect. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, next up we have Virginia Pressler. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thanks, Thank Virginia. Um, my name is Virginia Pressler. I live on Dennis Lane and we often walk towards Coffee Park and then have walked along. I really um, appreciate the sidewalk going straight and that it would be an even sidewalk. The zigzagging of the sidewalk right now is very, um, difficult to maneuver. I appreciate the comp, the middle, the medians, they look beautiful, I agree. And I also agree that the maintenance of those should be a top priority, that it doesn't look like the parts of Coffee Park that are getting overgrown with weeds. I think the visible, visible crosswalks are a great idea. And anything you can do to discourage the donuts because I can hear it on Dennis, what they're doing on the intersection of Hopper and Coffee. So it's very scary to hear what's going on just down the road. But I really appreciate these new ideas. And um, we do have a nursery right here with mature trees. I don't know how that all works, but I would like to note that if you put mature things in to make sure that it's still visible for drivers who are um, going right and left. Hopper is a street that goes due west in the morning, and sometimes you have the sun right in your face. So um, just to make sure that we can still see where we're going when we go to work in the morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Virginia. And we have Steve Rum. Hi, good evening. Um, I just had a couple things. Uh, first, on the sound wall, the maintenance, uh, that is the owner's responsibility. When we when the wall got rebuilt, we gave the colors of the wall to all the homeowners. And during when Coffee Strong was still around, we did have some paint. We did, and we had a couple of volunteers that helped out every now and then, but that's pretty much the responsibility of the wall of the homeowners. I just wanted to point that out. Um, on slide 18, it talked about, or 26, it talked about moving the bus stop. And if that bus stop gets moved up to Banyan and Skyview, that means that it's almost a mile to Schaefer to the next bus stop. And it actually moves that bus stop, um, makes that bus stop only about 1,000 feet or 1,200 feet to the closest one on airway. And it kind of blocks off anybody from Coffee Park, any students or anything that want to walk from Coffee Park, they got to walk all the way to the other end of Hopper. I'm not sure why the bus stop wouldn't was relocated, but that was my only comment. If you have these indented curb areas, maybe a bus stop could fit along Hopper rather than having, because I just see a lot of seniors walking along there to go to the bus. And now they don't because there's no shelter. So 
that was my only comment on the bus stop. And then on the north side of Hopper, um, there's a lot of utility vaults in the sidewalk. And it, knowing that walk, if they put these jogs in the sidewalk, would those, would that be, it, all that would have to be kind of re, um, raised or lowered to meet the new sidewalk. They, they might even be in the road. So that would be something to, um, it seems like that might be an issue, but the design looks great. And that's my only comment. Thank could you, I Steve. Ask, Steve, could I ask a clarification question on the, <laughs> the bus? Is your concern that the bus stop now is too far from Coffee Lane? Yeah, I mean, right now you've got people that are walking. Right now they they choose to walk to Schaefer. Like if they live all the way like by Banyan or I mean like Barnes and Hopper, they've got to walk either to Schaefer or before or they were walking to the corner of Hopper and Coffee Lane. Now they're going to have to walk another 1,900 feet along Hopper all the way to Banyan. And Ban and there's a bus stop at Airway. And Hopper right in front of my office. So that from that bus stop to that bus stop, only maybe a thousand feet. Okay. I'm just trying to picture this. Um, okay, we will take a look at that. I appreciate it, Steve. Thanks. Okay, next up, Eric Helkner. I'm so sorry if I didn't pronounce your name correctly, but you're certainly welcome to introduce yourself. Hi, good evening. It's Eric Heckner, uh, new to the neighborhood. Um, I live uh, on the southeast corner of Co Coffee and Hopper, and I guess I must be deaf. I don't hear donuts going on all day long, but I work all day. Nevertheless, uh, a couple of points. Um, following up on a lot of the comments already been made. Has, has there been any sort of a bike study of a volume per day of the number of bike bicyclists on Hopper? Um, that would also relate to the, just the last question about the bus stop. What's the ridership? What's the usage along Hopper on a daily, on a daily basis? Another point I have about the street trees, obviously it's a design issue, uh, making sure we pick the right type of tree so we don't have a lot of the uplift in the concrete. That seems to be prevalent even on your existing slides. You can see buckled concrete all up and down uh, hopper. Along with the trees, has there been any kind of a landscape study by adding a jungle in here? What about the visibility about coming out on Banyan and Skyview and such? looking left, looking right through all the trees. Has anybody done a study on that yet? Thank you, Eric. So the, the landscape elements, tree elements, and that sort of thing, um, definitely we are gonna step away from any trees that are notorious for uplifting sidewalks. Um, I mean, that's number one as we can see from uh, the existing condition. Um, we're just not that far in the design yet. Um, in terms of the, the bus ridership, we can obtain that information from our uh, transit department. Um, we are still kind of negotiating uh, the bus stop uh, location. And, um, I'm not sure about the bicycle studies, um, Brian, Rob. Are you, are you, I guess I'd wanna follow up with that. Um, are you not wanting bike lanes on there or? No, I'm, I am in favor. I am in favor okay. of bike lanes, but again, it's the needs of one outweigh the needs of a thousand people using the street every day. Uh, I can appreciate, I do ride bikes on occasion, um, and it is, I also have come down from Portland, Oregon, which is like bike capital of the world. <laughs> yes. So they're very, very visible. The bicyclists are very, very proactive in the 
in the uh, design elements of making it functional. But on a day-to-day -day basis, again, I'm not through the neighborhood between the hours of you know 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm just curious how many people are actually using uh, Hopper as a thoroughfare for bicycle activity, getting from coffee down to Highway 101. Um, all the schools are back behind us for for kids use with mostly recreational use is what it would seem to be. But definitely something is better than nothing. High visibility markings. The green green stripping is very common uh, to note uh, a pedestrian or a bicycle lane. Um, so I'm, I'm in, definitely in favor of it. I'm just curious. Yeah, the, we'll we'll look up those to see what we can find. But the at the same time, we're certainly trying to encourage. Um, bike circulation throughout the city. So um, this would go a long way for an east-west corridor. No, very good. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, as everyone said, it's a lot to, to digest in a short amount of time. So I look forward to seeing a, uh, a slideshow presentation in PDF or other, other means that we all can download, take a look at, have yep. our own uh, spare time to digest a lot of information here. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, looks like next up we have Lizzie. Lizzie, if you'd like to go ahead and um, answer that prompt so that we can unmute you and introduce yourself and make your comment or ask your question. Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Lizzie Byswinger. I am a senior at Montgomery High School and I'm working with the city for our American government classroom. And so I have a couple questions for you guys. One of my questions is, are there, can you identify any external forces that can affect the progress of your project or even the outcome? And then I also was wondering if you have been able to figure out some of the weaknesses of this project, some difficulties you have had, and then maybe um, some strengths along to go with that. And then I'm sorry, I have one more question. I was also wondering some of the opportunities that these improvements can make for this city. And then that is all, thank you. Chris, do you want me to take those? Go right ahead, Brian. Sure. Lizzie, thank you for the questions. This is great. Um, so external forces that may affect kind of change on this, just coming from my experience as a consultant, many times that that has to do with funding, um, funding of projects like this. And, and um, that sometimes has um, effects. So, you know, throughout this process, well, we have funding for this project. From the PGE, um, right? It is part of the PGE settlement. So funding is identified and secured for this project. And we okay. are currently showing improvements that we're, we're confident are within those budgets. So, as far as external forces, uh, that's our typical one that, that we don't have on this one. Um, weaknesses, or, or I, I would say challenges, in, mm -hmm. in maybe what you've heard from. Many, many of the comments, roadways are areas that have a lot of, a lot of interest, a lot of people, a lot of demands on. Um, and what we try to do as designers is try to balance the needs of multiple modes of circulation and the user needs. Um, so those are the challenges of it. Um, the strengths of this, I was taken aback to even, even as a designer to see the before and after images, even of a computer simulation that we're showing you tonight. Mm -hmm. From the stark reality of what's out there now, which is a wide expanse of asphalt, no street trees. It just does, the only people that it really feels comfortable for are for those drag racers. Right. So 
the strengths that I see in this process are, are the real meaningful impacts that these improvements will make just to the, the feeling of, of this roadway and the functionality of the roadway. Um, and the last one was opportunities. I, I didn't quite get that. So I was just kind of wondering if maybe some of the improvements you were doing on this street would influence more improvements throughout Santa Rosa. I would hope that it's, it's often, and again, I'm gonna reach back to my experience. Um, mm -hmm. We have a process here that the city is committed to, to working with the neighborhood to come up with a collective vision for a corridor that often sometimes doesn't happen on other roadway projects that we've worked on in other communities. So the opportunity here is to create, um, pardon the pun, Lizzie, a roadmap for mm -hmm. developing future roadway designs. And collectively, like Chris has said before, we are working with the Parks Department very closely before we even select plant material to understand the challenges of maintenance to ensure that we put um, materials and designs in that can be maintained for the long term. So I think that's the opportunity for the community is to give, give a model for how future projects could, could be taken. Of course, all right, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Sure. Well said, Brian. Thanks, Lizzie. Yeah, thank you guys. I think that's a future landscape architect, urban designer there. I was just hoping. gonna say, it's <laughs> it's really refreshing to see um, a high school student engaging in our civic process here. It's really, it's nice. Um, next up on our list, we have Chris. Chris, I'm gonna send you a prompt and it should allow you to unmute. Hi, uh, can you guys hear me? You yes, bet. I can. Cool. Um, uh, I'm a student at the JC, and right now I'm taking up a research class, but I might switch over to, uh, uh, you know, like urban design and stuff. Yes. Uh, I have a couple questions slash comments. Can I just throw them at you? Uh, are you guys planning on uh, planting drought-tolerant native trees? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I was wondering if we could mix and match these alternatives, like for the residential zone, maybe do alternative two, and then for the uh, transitional zone, uh, alternative one. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, I actually ride my bike to uh, most places I go um, when I when I can when I feel safe to. Uh, I've noticed along that corridor that there is uh, a lot of rocks and rubble that are commonly in the bike path that makes it actually kind of dangerous, you know, that and traffic, obviously. Do you have any plans to address like that or is that just because of the dis disrepair and the fires? The disrepair and the fires have definitely um, increased the amount of rubble and uh, miscellaneous debris in the bike lanes. Yes. And part of part of this project is a resurfacing project for the entire corridor. So have the street uh, cleaners sweep that area because I've noticed like <laughs> I'll, I'll be riding along and the the, uh, the car lane looks amazing and and there's just tons of like rocks and pebbles and uh, glass and and the um and the bike lane i can i can only speculate that the amount of disrepair of the roadway is outweighing the capacity of the street sweepers and the timing of those street sweepers. So once the roadway is is fixed, there's going to be less debris that would kick up, obviously, and the street sweepers would um, be able to keep up with it. Um, two more, just, uh, I've noticed people parking in the bike lanes. 
uh, which can be annoying. Uh, thankfully, there's a wide uh, margin that I can go into when that happens. But um, do you have any plans for that and any uh, enforcement? Uh, you're here. You cut out a little bit when you first said that. Are you saying that the cars moved into the buffer? Or they're parking? Yeah, they'll park in the they'll park in the uh, in the bike lane itself. Um, we will look at that. Um, there is no parking along the residential zone, um, nor are there um, residents abutting in this area. So um, we will certainly take a look at that. One more question. Do you have any uh, urban design jobs available for the city or the county? <laughs> Chris? That I'm not aware of, or I'm, it's out of my uh, field of expertise. So um, I, I would definitely check the city website and uh, maybe contact the parks department. Sorry, Chris, you were uh, breaking up a little bit. Oh, it looks great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next up, Janet Reisner. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I, I also live um, backing up to Hopper and I can agree with Megan and Alan that the racing goes on, especially at night, just all the time. I love the plan with the median strip of trees as well as trees along the back wall so that um, that would definitely discourage some of that racing. I also um, wanted to mention that we did landscape the back of or the part of the wall um, because we were told that we were responsible for maintaining it and Honestly, my husband was tired of going over there and weed eating. So we landscaped it with plants and um, vines and things. And I was wondering if there was any plan to take that out. Good question. Thank you, Janet. So we have, we have noticed that there's uh, one or two properties with um, with some nice landscaping in the area. Um, I, I would suppose that when we um, complete our final design that that it may it may be uh, it may conflict with some of our sidewalk and um, other planting um, plans. So there, there's the potential for it. Uh, Brian, do you want to provide some? Sure, sure. Our next, our next step after this is to obviously take your feedback and look at refinements. And then we're going to be developing a plan for the entire corridor. Right now, we're just showing you small vignettes to see if we're on the right path. So during that process, when we're looking at the entire corridor, we will be looking at those unique areas of, of special circumstances. I don't know exactly what the sidewalk is doing there right now, but what I can tell you is we are, this is a major construction project that will be removing the sidewalks, replacing them. Um, the Every single inch of the landscaping will be installed with a new irrigation system. And all of that is really disruptive and a challenge to retain existing landscaping. 
it becomes a little bit easier for mature trees, but for smaller shrubs and landscaping, it's a challenge to retain those during a construction project like this. Okay, I understand that um, it did come at some expense for us because again, we were told that we had to maintain it. And in regard to, regards to Chris's comment about not, people parking there, we, we just can't go through the wall. So my husband or any of the people who are responsible for uh, weed eating that section, we have to drive a truck or a vehicle with the tools in order to do that and park in the bike lane. We realize that's not allowed, but again, we were quote gifted this property and told we have to maintain it and we have to do the weed control. So um, that there's no option, but to park on Hopper when you're doing it. Um, there, there's no other option. So I did want to mention that um, as well as the, the concern that we did spend um, quite a bit of money to landscape that area, mostly just so we didn't have to um, use, um, that we didn't have to maintain it anymore since that was our new responsibility. So I did want to mention that and I wanted that taken into consideration. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, that we we are well aware of the um, of the property line and um, uh, residential uh, kind of overlap in along the Hopper Avenue corridor, and we're still we're still kind of figuring out. Um, certain pathways and um, how to navigate that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Janet. And we have, it looks like William Dorsey. Hi, good evening. Thank you for this presentation today. Um, I have uh, two questions here. Um, the, the renderings of the uh, various alternatives um, look good. I like the median strips uh, in there. I think that will uh, do some traffic calming. Um, the, the renderings show beautiful mature trees uh, lining the sidewalks here. Um, just curiosity as to would uh, how mature will these trees be um, uh, when when they're finally planted? So that's question one. And then question two is there's a large um, highway sign at the coffer, corner of Coffee Lane and uh, Hopper Avenue that says. Uh, uh, something, something to the effect of uh, street improvements happening, um, and I just wondering. I, I see a you know a two and a half year time frame here, uh, or year and a half time frame, and um, what's what are we expecting to be happening soon? With why that uh, why that large sign is there, and uh, I know that uh, it'll it'll take a long time for the for the bigger project to be completed. So curious as to what can we expect in the next uh, six months along Hopper that that time frame that that uh, sign is alerting us to. So my two questions. Thank you. Thank you, William. Um, so I believe that sign is potentially relating to the ongoing fire damage landscape project that is taking place both in uh, on stretches of or in, in certain areas of Coffee Park and as well as uh, Fountain Grove. Um, Brian, are you um, 
I know the project well, but I I don't I don't know this the sign. Um, okay. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure what that sign says. It, it's a large a large sign like you would see along the side of a highway that says uh, road construction ahead. It's solar powered, flashing lights, and uh, I don't see any action happening on Hopper Avenue. Uh, that it that uh, that that signs alerting me to. So most most likely that's the landscape project. So there there was some uh, in that landscape fire damage landscape project. Um, we've been we've been kind of coordinating with our um, with our coworkers on this, and um, that project for our relevant scope from coffee to highway one um, actually is just demoing out, I think some root masses and some uh, uh, defunct water meters and backflow preventers, um, kind, of, kind of cleaning the slate for, uh, for our project. Okay, thanks for that explanation. How about the maturity of the trees? You bet, I, I can take that one, Chris. Um, Short answer, William, I don't know yet. Um, okay. I, I honestly do not have a the tree selections figured out yet. Um, like Chris has been saying, we're working closely with the Parks Department for those selections. What I can tell you is what we're trying to do is have a tree at maturity that's going to have a canopy that's uplift to maximize visibility to provide a canopy <clears throat> over the roadway that's going to help with traffic calming. And I think occasionally provide a different type of tree that may provide some seasonal color and some accent for um, just beautification, kind of announcing the, the neighborhood and such. So those would be the characteristics. And then of course, you know, drought tolerant, low water usage, easy maintain, um, those are some of the things that I will be looking at for the tree selection, which we'll present later. I like to hear all those characteristics. Thank you. Thank you, William. Okay, and uh, next up we have Bushan. Uh, good evening, all. I just got a new mic. Just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes. Awesome. I have quite a few things, unfortunately, so you might want to get a pin because I want to answer all of them right away. Uh, you might want to think about some. Um, first, uh, you said the slide should be on the website and this video. I was looking on there. I didn't see the video from the previous meeting. Um, Janet was talking about the rights of the homeowner, um, and you're saying you're having to figure that out. I know the group Coffee Strong had three ladies that got in touch with all those homeowners for that copper, uh, hopper wall. And if you get with uh, any one of those three, I'm sure they can help you with that. And maybe you guys figure out the legalese. As far as the upkeep of all that. Now, I've been uh, one of the neighborhood coordinators since after the fire. And uh, I was kind of in integral to uh, being the intermediary, intermediary between uh, the park and the homeowners when uh, the park was being built. Um, since the park's completion, uh, I did about two years. Every month, I would do a park cleanup. And due to circumstances, I can't do that anymore. I bring that into focus as I saw how little they actually came to clean up the park. So I'd highly suggest whatever you plant there to be mostly maintenance free because the parks department, regardless of what they say, will not be able to get around to it in the need that it will need to be taken care of. Um, I do want to talk about what Steve Ron was talking about, that bus. I pulled up the Google map, and I see if you go east, just past Banyan on the hopper, there's a bus stop right there. So you'd have two bus stops right next to each other. Um, take a look at that, and maybe just leave that other one back there, because it sounds like quite a few people like it where it is. One of the things we talked about with the city is not changing a lot of the stuff that we had before the fire. So... Definitely look at that. <laughs> uh, as far as parking uh, near that wall, yeah, those people, um, that is their property, according to the city. They have to maintain that. 
I know Janet was one of the very first that did a hell of a job making that landscaping look beautiful. Uh, she's also a friend of mine, so that's why I referred to her. Um, but it is, it's great. Um, the problem is, yeah, you should not park there. Um, to especially because of the um the bicycle guys uh and gals riding bicycles. Um, I worked with the city closely on the safety uh along Coffee Lane as well as uh San Miguel Avenue, since I live off San Miguel, and we have some really broken sidewalks here. What they did was they put up berms for the bicyclists. So um yeah, slide 26, I'll be getting to that in a second. Um, if you want to put up berms between the buffer zone and the bicycle, I think that could accomplish parking there and also a little bit more safety for the bicyclists. The sideshows have been a huge issue, like major problems. We're talking when people come here, it's unsafe not only because they graffiti, but there has been gunshots in our neighborhood, which seriously, we've been through enough shit. We don't need a bunch of gangbangers coming here with that. Um, I've tried to work with the city and they won't do it. And I know they do do it because if you go out on uh, Paloma Hill Road, there's many intersections where they put the bots. Um, since you guys are doing this now, it'd be the perfect opportunity to put some bots in the middle of Coffee Lane and Banyan and Hopper, which is both places that have had massive car shows or sideshows from these idiots. Uh, the police have been doing a lot better job. They're doing um, more working with other cities to get that accomplished. But the more stuff we can do to stop it, the better. Um, now talking about that walkway right there, uh, uh, slide 26, I see you got uh, the lights there. What I'd also like to see is if you can do the same blinky lights down at Crestview Lane, have a, a crosswalk there. I don't think there is one now. And it's not the biggest deal if there's one right there or not, but it would help. But 100% put those same crosswalk lights, the lights themselves, at Coffee and Hopper. Um, my biggest thing for my neighborhood is to keep everyone safe. And anything, even that little extra we can do to keep it safe would be great. Like I said, there's a few things, and I appreciate you guys let me uh, uh, tell you what I got going on. Lastly, and I doubt you guys have any knowledge of it, but I have to ask, um, is there going to be up, any updating of the Piner Creek Trail? I say this because you push the bicycling and there's no safer route to bicycle from Hopper to Piner Avenue and further than to be on a path that has no cars at all. And that'd be the Piner Creek Trail. That is all I have for right now, unless you have questions for me. Maybe just that, that last one, part of what we're trying to do, maybe on slide 26, was to move that bus stop um, to provide a better and safer connection for that Piner Creek. So it's not immediately, you can see it in that kind of lower left-hand corner plan view where Piner Creek kind of cuts across the word avenue. Um, it would provide a, a safer crossing for- Wait, are you, saying, are you saying to move the, you're moving the, we're Bus moving it. That's on the east side of Banyan. I'm looking uh, at Google Maps the, right now. Yes, the, bus the east stop. side of Banyan. So you're not talking about the bus stop that was over at Coffee. No, we're talking oh, about moving. Well, that's perfect. I don't think anyone will have a problem with that. Yeah. So this is not a new new bus stop. It's a relocation of an existing bus stop, just right. east of Banyan Place. Yes. Right, east, not west. I got it. I understand right. exactly where it is now. Oh, uh, I did have one last thing. Um, is the slideshow, uh, is the previous video on the website and I just missed it? Uh, meeting, uh, uh, this, the Zoom meeting video from the first one. Or did you have one? I missed that. We did have a previous Zoom meeting. Uh, we'll double check that and and look for opportunities. So look for an update on the. I appreciate the site it. Shortly. Thank you for what you do. I think it's going to be a lot better than what it is. Uh, you just get all of our opinions because that's what we're full of. Well, that's <laughs> we're here for your input. Thanks, Bushan. Not a problem, yeah. Brian. Brian, thank you very much. You're I, welcome. Uh, I appreciate you actually using the website. Okay.
looks like next up we have Dave. Dave, if you'd like to introduce yourself and uh, ask your question or make your comment. Hi, hey Chris, uh, hey Rob. Um, personally, I like alternative one in the residential area and alternative two in the transition area. Um, I do have a question. Um, with all the improvements you're gonna do, or if you do all the bulb outs, um, are you gonna create, uh, you have to do LID requirements? And if you do, where are you gonna put all that? Um, you do need to keep in mind that trees you plant in either planter strips or um, the, the median islands out in the middle will create vision issues unless you put them back far enough. Um, and also, you have to keep in mind the whole attitude, if you build it, they will come, doesn't work. Um, so just because you put bike lanes in does not mean suddenly you're gonna have a bunch of bicyclists out there using it. Um, I don't have a problem with buffer zones or anything like that, but you have to keep in mind that you don't wanna create another fountain grove area from basically um, stagecoach drive to the top of the hill where if a fire truck is trying to get through, there is really nowhere to absolutely at all to pull over to let that bike or to let that fire truck pass you. So you have to have space. So basically you have to leave 20 feet open. So you have a place for the vehicle to pull over to let the fire truck get past. Um, that's it. Thanks, Dave. All right, thank you, Lisa. Nice to, I'm sorry that uh, I didn't realize you were not quite finished. So please go ahead and. Well, uh, that's fine. And um, actually it's interesting that I'm uh, following Dave because my comment, um, I thought of it quite a while ago. So I've been on, um, I've had my hand raised for a while. And um, Dave, you made a comment about, um, you know, if they build it, um, they will come and, and sounded as though you uh, might take issue with that. So um, earlier, several people were asking about statistics in terms of the, the ridership on the bus and maybe also uh, how many people are riding bikes on the corridor. Having lived here for so long and my street, I'm on Randon, so it's the very last street before you get to Barnes Road. I have never taken the bus and I've never ridden my bike down the corridor. I would love to, but I don't feel safe um, because of the, you know, just because of the traffic um, and the bus stop. If you if you want to put one closer to um, to Hopper, I would be all for that. I like having a covered one also. And Brian, I want to thank you because you um, you made a comment about looking uh, looking down the road and trying to. Uh, create a model and, and more opportunities for people either to, you know, to get out of our cars, to use mass transportation, and, um, and maybe to use our bikes more than cars. So I do appreciate that. And um, so, yeah, thank you for, for keeping that in mind. And I'm, I'm appreciating all of the comments that everybody is, is bringing to mind here. Um, yeah, and I think that was it. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. And we have Chris Gunter. Thanks, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, just wanna say thank you. This is a great discussion and really appreciate all the work that's gone into this and especially the emphasis on uh, hearing from the community, both in this meeting and the prior meeting. Um, <clears throat> really like a lot of features of these designs, including the traffic calming. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I thought it was interesting that beautification came to the top and I know it's about trees and plants and so forth, but I wanna offer that streets full of our friends and neighbors are also really beautiful. 
And uh, so I think it is really important to continue to prioritize efforts to make the streets more people friendly. Um, and that means obviously the, the bike and pedestrian features, also the landscaping, um, so that this isn't just a, a car dominated um, landscape, but, but also one where people really feel really comfortable to, to be present and to spend time together um, and to get to and from the places where they need to go, you know, using whatever mode of transit they use. Just quickly on the, you know, the question of demand for bikes and transit, I thought um, the comments just a moment ago from Lisa were, were spot on. And I know this isn't a priority for some users, that's fine, there are still car lanes there. Uh, but demand for, you know, bike and pedestrian and transit, th those things are changing, they are growing in a lot of places, and they're growing here and there's a lot of support for them. Electric bikes are totally changing this equation. It's making it a lot more feasible for a lot more people to get around this way. Um, and people of all ages and abilities too, not just the, the road warriors that we usually think of when we think of, um, of cyclists. The, the other issue is cost. Some people can't afford to drive. And so they need safe places to ride their bikes. This is a crucial feature. And the more we create this connectivity throughout the city, the more we're gonna see that impact. On the question of protected bike lanes, um, I'm really disappointed not to see an alternative that makes a more serious effort to incorporate protected lanes. I like the places where they are. I like the wider buffers in some of these alternatives. <clears throat> and I do appreciate the, the, the trade-offs involved, but these lanes are being built in cities all around the world and in other US cities as we speak, including in communities that are far less progressive and far less visionary than ours. So I really feel like something's misfiring here when we get project after project where we ask for this and we don't get it. And I, I worry that that's a failure of imagination, not a truly practical limitation, especially on a roadway as wide as this one. Um, sometimes we're told that it's because there's parking. Well, you know, where would the cars park? We couldn't put a protected lane and people have to get through the bike lane to go and park. But now we're being told, well, it's evacuation, even on a road where there's no parking. So it doesn't really add up. And I feel like we can do better. Um, and just on the question of the evacuation routes and the fire department, flex posts can be driven over in an emergency situation. That's one of their benefits. So I really think it's possible with all of that our community has been through and all of the ways in which we've had to bend over backwards in emergency situations, if they happen, God forbid, that we can overcome and, and have flexibility in the roadway to, to make it possible to deal with that, but not have to sacrifice these other features that people use every single day all the time and can use all the time. Um, and, and, and by the way, for the sake of safety, that's what this is about. So let's not sacrifice the safety of people who use the roadway every single day for these anomalous situations of safety. They can be compatible. Lastly, on the question of two lanes in the commercial zones, I really, really hope that we can get some more information on the levels of traffic and that we don't treat those as immutable. The city has goals to reduce vehicle miles traveled and to increase active transportation. And if we don't create space for that to happen, we will continue to see the same numbers and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's really important that safe and effective bike lanes are part of this design and also that they stretch all the way into the commercial zone because people should be able to ride their bikes to restaurants, to shopping and all the other amenities that are in commercial zones. They can't just be for residential zones, otherwise people can't use them to get around. That's it, thanks so much. Thanks, Chris. So one of the reasons why um, we were kind of stepping away from the uh, full on protected uh, bike lanes, uh, which I, forgot to mention earlier was uh, we had a conversation about this item with the materials lab and um, apparently it's having having some sort of delineator um, whether it's a curb or um, if we had the um, flexible um, the flexible cone items it makes, it makes road um, preventative maintenance, such as a slurry seal, much more difficult to apply. Um, in, in the say, in the instance of a uh, curbed um, or island um, 
median for a protected bike lane, long stretches. It makes uh, the width of the, the slurry machines, um, they're, I think they're very few and far between or very specialty. And so getting that five foot stretch is, is, is difficult or potentially hand applied. Yeah, I appreciate that. But again, these lanes are being built in other cities. They're making it work. We can make it work too. Thank you very much for your input. Okay, um, it looks like we've kind of come back around a little bit. Let's, um, let's hear from Eric once more. Hi, this is Eric. Sorry, uh, I had to step away. Um, just a, a follow up that I don't know had been addressed. I, had, I was gone for the last 20 minutes. Um, the commercial zone, industrial zone, um, any thoughts and ideas on how to curb the increasing amount of uh, T-bone accidents as people are pulling out of the Chevron station and McDonald's and trying to cross over to get to 101? And how much input does Caltrans have on this intersection change from uh, 101 Hopper and transitioning into uh, Cleveland? Would be the terminus of the, all of these bike lanes going into that uh, nasty intersection there. Thanks, Eric. So the that commercial zone was definitely brought up and we're, it's kind of interesting. Um, Brian, what, what are your thoughts on it, on this question? So I, I think what we need to do is take, a, take the input um, and we're going to be looking at the entire corridor as part of the next iteration of this. So I don't have a clean answer for you right now, but I've got the input and I've got a lot of um, other things that I'm going to want to make sure that we um, give you clear answers for at the next next meeting. So. So have you had any interface with Caltrans at the extent of the city's responsibility and the state? coming off the off ramp. So I'll let Chris can piggyback on this, but our project limits end before we get into the Caltrans right away. So we have, we have as part of this project, we have not had any communication with Caltrans or any kind of tweaks or input on that on that intersection because ours stops clear of that. Okay, uh, where, what is a demarcation line, do you know? Um, I'll, I'll put it on the map next time. Okay. I appreciate it, thank you. Sure. And we have Alex Forrester. Or, I'm sorry, Alexa, I, I didn't read that correctly. I, I apologize. Oh. That's okay. Um, hi, everybody. I just love this work and I'm glad that we have slide 25 up because that's what I want to comment on. Um, I think both alternatives are good. I personally uh, prefer alternative one for both, but um, you know, I think they would both be a big improvement. I am concerned about this commercial zone as a parent that rides with a child. I just want to ask everybody looking at the slide, would you ride with your seven-year-old in that bike lane? And if the answer is no, then you're not going to have any families using that bike infrastructure. Um, and it's probably for the better because accidents are possible. Um, I hear that the city might think that there's too much level of traffic there to take out the lanes. I was in Massachusetts recently, and I've also seen some footage from some cities in Arkansas 
where they actually combine the bike lane into the sidewalk. And it's actually, the reason I wouldn't ride in this five foot bike lane here is because one, it's too narrow and there's no buffer between the cars and me and my family, but also it, it's over, it splits over the gutter and that eventually wears down and it, it makes this sort of dangerous groove between the asphalt and the concrete there. And so it's really not a safe riding space except for super experienced road warriors. But if you actually, uh, what, what they did in Massachusetts is that they would like put the bike lane up next to the sidewalk all at the same level and then move that closer to the, um, you know, the edge of the property and then put the trees between both the bike lane and the, and the um, you know, so it would be pedestrians, then cyclists, then trees, then the lanes of traffic. I actually think five feet would be adequate if I wasn't riding right next to cars with my kid, if I was up on a sidewalk um, and then that would, the combined width kind of gives you the, the wiggle room you need to get around pedestrians and not endanger them. And you can do different surfaces on the sidewalk to indicate where the bikes are supposed to go and the walkers are supposed to go. So if we can't take away one of the traffic lanes here, I'm wondering if that would help um, make this space usable for all users. Um, and we could, you know, get get everything we need out of the project. Thank you. Thanks, Alexa. So we did discuss um, the opportunity for potential uh, multi-use pathway. Um, we can. This is definitely a good comment for especially addressing such a um, um, unique unique area. Um, I, I appreciate this comment and we'll definitely, we'll definitely evaluate the commercial zone differently, especially with all the, the last couple comments. Thank you for that. Okay. So, um, with no further questions, we wanted to close tonight by taking a final quick poll. Our, our last poll question is aimed to gauge your comfort with the alternatives presented tonight, and specifically if you want to have a third community meeting to see the refined plans. Based upon the input tonight. Would you like to attend another community meeting to review and provide comments on the preferred design alternative. Hundred percent. Okay. So I would like to express my appreciation and thank the members of the public, the panelists, interpreter, and our hosts for participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and provide your input on Hopper Avenue. As I mentioned earlier. In addition, to, in addition to your participation tonight, we would also like you to visit the project website listed on the screen and visit hopper.com and take our online survey. We appreciate your participation in tonight's meeting and we hope you can join us again in the spring when we will, when we will review the final, the refined concept designs based on your feedback. We'll send another postcard mailer with the meeting date and location once it's confirmed. Updates will also be posted on the project website. On the website, you can also subscribe to receive email updates on this project. Thank you again for participating tonight and good night. <laughs>